I mean, if you have the determination to actually make a change, obviously you need to preach what you pray. Um, yeah. You got to, it's going to require work and it's going to require discipline. Okay. Uh, today I'm talking to Julian. And even though we have the same last name, sort of, uh, I don't pronounce it correctly. So Julian Villarreal. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. Um, no, I, I'm married to a Villarreal also with one R, not two. <laughs> Small world. There's a lot Small of yeah, world. Yeah. <laughs> Small <laughs> world. Um, cool. So we're going to talk about, you have like a cool story about how you've lost weight and you're like, uh, you're like always at the gym per Facebook. Not always, but you're at the gym a lot and that's awesome. And I was looking at your profile and there's some like very cool photos of before and after. But before we get into all that, Oh, and I have to say, by the way, everybody who's watching who usually follows me on the carnivore diet, I have no idea how he eats. <laughs> so well, I guess we'll find out. Um, but Julian, I lived in Texas from 2009 to 2013, and I love Texas and I love Texans. <laughs> yeah. What part of Texas were you from? Um, I was living in Irving. Oh, okay. So you're in yeah. North. I'm in the South. So yeah. Whole nother culture. It's, oh, really? Okay. I loved, I loved living in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, I did not ever like what a burger. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Don't even say that. You're going to get a riot. <laughs> yeah. Also, also I noticed that you like guns and I like guns and, oh. um, I don't have any, but I remember at the time, um, somebody I was with was like, we need to get a gun. I'm like, why do we need a gun? He's like, I'll even get you a Hello Kitty gun. I'm like, I don't need a gun. I don't care about guns. <laughs> yeah, we Texans love our firearms. That's a, that's part of our blood, you know? Yeah, totally. You have a, a YouTube channel about that, right? Yes, I have a JDB Plinking. And um, that one is just to, I just made it because I wanted to promote firearms. Um, you know, I grew up as a hunter and an avid outdoorsman. Yeah. I just really enjoy the sport in general. So I was like, okay, we'll make these cool videos where we're shooting guns, you know, and <laughs> it, I mean, I was like, people love it. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, totally. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, all right. So other thing about Texas that I didn't really like is the heat. And I imagine in Harlingen, you're in Harlingen, right? Or Houston? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. It must be worse than in the North. <laughs> Yeah, today I think it got to, oof, it was like around 100, 200 for midday. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. How do you deal with that? Uh, well, it comes naturally. I mean, we're used to these summers, you know, and just yeah, it just being out there. I mean, there's obviously some perks to it. Of course, you sweat more, so then you're getting out more toxins. Um, oh, sure. Life. And then if you naturally tan, oh, that's not a problem here. You, oh you yeah outside boom it comes <laughs> on you know yeah exactly i remember at a restaurant i was at it said women don't sweat in texas they glisten <laughs> that, that's pretty accurate <laughs> <laughs> okay cool so tell me tell me how, like what brought you uh to a realization that you should improve your health and improve your body well that's a really good question you know um Back in 2023, I actually went out with my mom to a business boot camp, a Grant Cardone business boot camp. Nice. You know, you see these successful people around and they're all like in shape and they look great. At the time I went, I was about 304 pounds. And, um, oh, wow. you know, it, it felt kind of interesting. Like no one invalidated me for my weight, but sure. just consciously I had attention on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't start making any massive changes right at that point. Funny enough, okay. it was later on. I just noticed life started becoming difficult um, oh. just physically. Like I couldn't sleep properly. I mean, I had to prop myself up because my airway would close. So kind of like a sleep apnea. And keep yeah. in mind, um, at this time I was 23. Um, oh, wow. You're so young. <laughs> yeah, I'm a young guy, you know. Yeah. Um, right now I'm 24. I'm turning 25 here in July. Okay. Um, so it's a good time to change things in general, you know, but right. I was just in general, I wasn't feeling great physically. It was just like things were starting to drag and get worse. Right. And um, there was even a point I remember 
where I had an acid reflux attack that was pretty bad. I mean, when I say pretty bad, I was gagging on acid and I couldn't, oh, wow. I couldn't breathe. And, um, my, my past, uh, my past significant other at the time, um, was with me and I thought I was going to die. I'm not even joking. Like we were trying to get it out. It, it wasn't work. It wasn't good. So even that at that time I didn't change. And, um, mm. over time, you know, I was like, it just started adding up, adding up. And then around in, I would say August, 2023, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to go get a gym membership. We need to do something about this. I need to have a group of like-minded people right. there to work with. And, you know, that's when everything sort of started. I mean, massive weight loss, I would say officially started around November, 2023. And then okay. that's when I really started working on the weight and, um, it just shut off like that. It was like, Oh you know, wow. Oh yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's awesome. Um, so did you have by any chance like type two diabetes or anything like that at that, at that large weight? That's a good question. You know, I, I actually may have had it. I don't know if I did because I wasn't seeing a doctor actively. at the Oh, time. okay. Okay. Um, and, one, uh -huh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, at the time losing all this weight, I mean, there's several factors I took into play with yeah. doing this in general, you know, I didn't just take one thing and it worked. You have okay. to have consistency. And of course, if you're attacking it from different angles, weight will drop. It drops sure. even faster. So, um, you know, around November, 2023, October, 2023, I did see a doctor, a functional medicine doctor. Okay. And we started taking labs and, um, you know, obviously there were some high enzymes in there. The liver wasn't doing well. Um, obviously I was fat, you know, like, they, you know, obvious things, um, yeah. but, but you know, he gave me some supplements to help as well. Okay. And for a certain amount of time, I was taking peptides to help me lose weight and help with that appetite suppressant. Okay. Uh, just so then I could get used to eating normal because I was sure. eating like, oof, four or 5,000 calories a day at that weight. You know, it's a lot. Sure. Sure. And there's like lots of fast food, <laughs> lots of easy, accessible fast food. Yeah. You know, that was a big thing. You know, um, I'm a pretty busy guy. Sure. And, uh, at the time I wasn't taking, uh, I, I didn't see the value in meal prepping or, you know, doing that stuff. And I was just eating out constantly. So of course, that doesn't work out in the long run. It no. really hurts you. Big sure, time. sure. So how much weight have you lost? So from that point, November 2023, I was 304. And then I went down. Currently, I'm about 238. Um, and I've oh, been that's great. Yeah, so it's close to, I think that's 66 pounds. About. That's awesome. It's quite a bit. And <laughs> That's quite a bit, but also you've been working out a lot. Like I'm going to do a before and after photo and yeah. you have lots of muscles now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Then, yeah. Do you know like how much body fat you've lost versus how much muscle you've put on? I need to do a BMI test to be honest, but okay. you can see it in the mirror. Like you see all that muscle there and also going to the gym, of course, like there's the mental factor that you're staying consistent on the game. And you're hitting that from another angle to keep sure. your discipline. Sure. But, you know, the gains are real. Like you, you have to keep in mind when you're weightlifting um, and you lose 60 pounds, for example, your yeah. main goal at that point isn't to main, to grow your strength. It's actually to maintain, because if I'm benching, let's say 250 pounds, it's going to feel different 60 pounds lighter and I have to be sure. able to do it. So, I would say, yeah, you know, weightlifting and keeping consistent. I've been able to maintain a lot of my strength from that weight. Some yeah. lifts I actually do, I do have a, that are stronger. For example, my squat. Um, yeah. I can squat. I think my record right now is a 445 for single. Okay. Oh, but wow. I usually rep in the high threes, uh, low fours. It just depends how the body feels. But sure. I, I so, have noticed that. Yeah, for hmm, sure. Okay. Awesome. 
Uh, and now, did you change like how you were eating and like what you were eating? Big time. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so the main thing that I did, because um, I have tried fad diets, for example, okay. I, I've tried keto. I did a little sure. bit of carnivore at one point. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit paleo, but I was like, I couldn't find something that my body was 100% happy in. Mm, um, sure. And, uh, of course, when you're used to eating a lot of carbs, you have to yeah. get, you have to change and you got to get used to it. Um, yeah. And I like the concept of carnivore too. It, it's great. Um, sure. It just for me, for my body with the lifting I've done and stuff, I hadn't gotten into the point where I was comfortable. Right. Okay. Uh, and maybe I, I'll admit, maybe there's some things I could have fixed. You know, there's always room for improvement. Sure. Yeah. And maybe we, later we'll talk about carnivore and how you did it and, and stuff like that. But how, so how do you eat now? Like what do you, like what was your successful action on changing your food patterns that helped yep. you also lose that weight? So the biggest thing that helped me was calorie tracking. Um, oh, okay. So I have an app, my fitness pal, and okay. I can see there exactly what I'm eating. And yeah. I just know it's like keeping statistics. If you know, if you're doing well and you're seeing the sure. difference, you know, you're able to adjust. Sure. So, I started calorie tracking around November mm -hmm. and I just put it in as um, a discipline point. Okay. And over time, like let's say you lose 10, 20 pounds, you have to readjust how much calories you're taking. So I was doing that and um, you know, it's been helping. The other thing I do watch is my protein intake. So if you want to build muscle, uh, one stable datum of weightlifters, powerlifters, people mm -hmm. with that sport, is to eat the same amount of uh, grams in protein as your body weight. Tracking all this, I do eat a lot of protein. Um, some days I eat more than my body weight. Some days I eat a little less. Okay. Um, but that's a big thing. So I, I do eat a lot of natural meat. I try to stick it more to the organic. Sure. Um, and then, of course, like, you know, I do have protein shakes and stuff. You know, it's... Oh, okay. I, I do have a bit of a sweet tooth. So I'll, I'll get... Um, kind of creative with it and I'll get like, let's say 0% fat Greek yogurt. And then you mix in uh, your protein powder and it tastes like donuts. It's great. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, sure. But, <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I, I like that. I like, I do. Sure. Have That's okay. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there, if you, I'll, I'll just like explain. I also tried keto for a long time and um, I'm, I'm like 15 years older than you. And I've had kids. So your body as if having like a female body, it changes a lot when you're older, especially having yeah. kids, your body changes a lot. So I had gained a lot of weight in my pregnancies and I couldn't get it off. And mm -hmm. I still haven't gotten all of it off. Um, but I had a lot of inflammation and many physical issues. My sleep was destroyed. Like you were mentioning, it was terrible. Yeah, My sleep was terrible for years. So I came to carnivore with the hope that I would like, I see these people losing hundreds of pounds. I was hoping I was going to lose that weight. It didn't totally happen that way. I have lost weight, but mm -hmm. not to my ideal. <laughs> however, however, um, I had gut issues for years, like some acid reflux, but like diarrhea, all these problems, gut issues. I couldn't sleep. Um, yeah. Just a lot of terrible things. I even had like a C-section scar that never healed after five years. And in three months on being on like the carnivore diet, it totally healed. Like just very weird stuff. I can't even remember all of it. Um, the feminine cycle totally thrown off. Yeah. handled with the carnivore diet. So, oh, years of back pain. And the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I stick to this way of eating. Because if I go off, my favorite thing is popcorn, especially my own personal homemade popcorn. Um, yeah. If I go off, I feel terrible. I feel physically not good. And so all these things cleared up and like, it felt like days of getting, stop eating sugar and carbohydrates and vegetables. Vegetables are very, they, they don't sit well with me. So mm. like, I understand what you're saying and you're like very young and you're doing a great job, like healing your body. But me, I can't go back. I can't, <laughs> I can't eat carbs. Like I can't eat carbs. I can't eat vegetables because it does like very crazy stuff in my body. Uh, no, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen different people have different ways of eating. And, you know, it's really kind of the, the main thing with weight loss is what can you stick to? And right. what's both for your body. That's yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, I'm curious, because you said you eat protein, like what proteins do you concentrate on? So I like to focus. So I'm a hunter. That's one Okay. <laughs> so I do try to source natural protein from like, let's say deer, elk. Um, oh, wow. Animals like that. Okay. Um, but of course, sometimes you run out. So the, <laughs> other, the other, I like to focus mainly on reds. I, I okay. do. I have noticed that when I eat red meat, I feel better. Sure. Um, also, I've noticed with weightlifting, I'm significantly stronger and eggs is a big thing. Okay. So for example, let's say I, I come back from, I don't know, squatting a bunch of weight, my legs are destroyed and I need to eat good. I'll get like four eggs and then I'll put half a cup of uh, non-fat cottage cheese in there, mix it up yeah. and then I'll get like eight ounces of beef burgers. Yeah. And, and then I'll get some air fried potatoes. You know, I, I do have some carbs that, like I said. Okay. Uh, and then. Like how many, do you know how many, uh, like carbohydrates, like total you eat a day? Oh, I need, I do track it. So I could actually check right here. <laughs> yeah. So it depends. Like some days, like for example, today was father's day. So yeah. I won't lie. I ate a little heavy. Sure. So <laughs> I understand. I was, I was working out for four hours before that. <laughs> oh, okay. So, good, good, good. You're covered. <laughs> I earned that. Um, yeah. but let's see. Okay. Yesterday was actually, let's take a normal day and let's take like, okay. That is, they're actually kind of low. Okay. I'm, I'm curious if you're actually just doing a ketogenic diet and you didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So, for example, this Friday I ate 247 grams of protein. Carbs yeah. was 115 grams, which is oh, actually, okay. It's not that's not horrible. Uh, yeah, I, I think low low carb, like if you're in the low carb space, it's around 100. I think if yeah. you're doing like a ketogenic way of eating, it's probably 50 total. And then if you are a person like me, you need to eat 20 or less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, there's, I do notice there's a lot of fat in here as well. Um, Lovely. So, that's, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we love fat. That's a yeah. Good <laughs> it's great. Isn't it great to eat delicious food? <laughs> oh yeah. No, butter's great. I mean, all of it, it's good. You know, all of it's good. Yeah. Um, so now I'm curious because when I tried to do keto, I was like not educated well enough and I was doing it totally wrong. So yeah. I say I did keto, but I did it wrong. And then doing carnivore, <laughs> I did a lot of research on it before I started eating this way. Um, how did you do keto? So I won't lie. It wasn't perfect either. You know, like <laughs> at first it was very healthy, you know, and it was good and I felt good. Yeah. And of course the craving started hitting, even though I was having nutritional yeast and like getting rid of these cravings, like, yeah, I wanted some sweets. Yeah. I wanted some carbs. Sure. I sure. started doing like a dirty keto type thing. Okay. And I, was, I was still shedding weight, you know, it was yeah. working, but yeah. it wasn't a long-term thing. Um, like you get to that peak of like, let's say 30 pounds and then you stop for a little bit and pff, it goes back up. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you change, it'll come back on in seconds. Almost. Yeah. It comes back so fast. That's what I do like about the current way I train. Um, yeah. And eat the like for example today i ate really heavy yesterday yeah. I ate really heavy i can go burn it off sure like it i maintain weight i don't really sure. gain which is nice yeah i do burn i mean i go to the gym five times a week and then each session's anywhere between two to two and a half hours oh and wow it, it's a mix like you have weight lifting you have cardio high intensity interval training like this is a lot of calorie burning. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Just walking totally. into town and, you know, tracking the macros, everything. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and then how did you, when you attempted to do the carnivore diet, how did you do that? So I went flat out, which was the issue. Um, oh, okay. Like you didn't, uh, you, you pulled the Band-Aid off. You didn't like ease into it. Okay. That was the thing I ran into. Um, I just went into it and the biggest thing I like is sauce, you know, like I like barbecue. Okay. Sauce or oh, like, sure. You're Texan. <laughs> we, we like flavor. 
So yeah. that was a thing that was messing with me the most. Okay. And then I did notice, like, for example, with my body specifically, if I eat a ton of protein and not enough fiber, yeah. um, what will happen is um, digestion wise, I feel horrible. It's very oily mm -hmm. okay, and very uncomfortable and my stomach doesn't sit well. So okay. there was a point where I was doing that diet and then I started getting that. But, you know, there's ways to counter it. Like if you take your enzyme, I, or I forget the, the exact things, bile salts, I believe. I was and taking and I still take um, betaine hydrochloride. It's like stomach acid supplements and that right. helps. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. I don't take it all the time, but mm -hmm. I mean, if you're interested, I can give you like a five minute rundown of possibly how to how to do it. So uh, while like me, I'm an addicted to I'm a carb addict. I don't I'm not in, I'm not indicating that you're a carb addict, but no, I um, am 100 percent. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> Uh, there will be a period of time that maybe kind of sucks at the beginning yeah. Uh, where you're trying to withdraw from it because these substances are like drugs. They're very addictive for the body. Um, so you have to like get off of them. I used to be a smoker. Mm. It, it's hard. It, I quit smoking when I found out I was pregnant and that was, and I replaced that addiction with food. <laughs> I was a smoker at one point too. So. Okay. Were you out of curiosity? Were you thinner when you were a smoker? <laughs> Mm, no <laughs> no oh okay <laughs> no no yeah i was i was bloated for sure. oh okay okay um uh, because i was definitely thinner when i was a smoker mm. even though i was still addicted to carbs but i would replace like food time with smoke time <laughs> yeah no i understand right. yeah so, okay. So at the beginning, when you're trying to start a carnivore diet and I didn't ask you to this interview to try to like convert you or something like this. No. I just, <laughs> I mean, I was honestly curious, like what you were doing. Cause it's quite impressive. Like your before and after and you look, okay. So beginning, so you don't torture yourself. You get all of the non carnivore foods out of your house. You have to get them all out of your house. Um, mm. or else it's sitting there and it's just like constant reminder, like out of sight, out of mind. You need yeah. to get a good electrolyte, most yeah. likely, especially you, because you work out a lot. So you're sweating. You're going to get, oh, yeah. you're going to lose like electrolytes. Um, Big time. And if you have water, this is what I've learned. I'm not, disclaimer, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. But what I've heard <laughs> from other doctors, and it makes sense, is that you're going to, you're holding on to water when you eat carbohydrates and you stop eating carbohydrates, you're going to lose the water. But with that, apparently goes your electrolytes. So you got to have good electrolytes. Um mm. Salt to taste, and um, you have to. You can either like lower your carbohydrates over, like taper them down, or just go cold turkey. But that didn't work for you, really. Oh. It didn't seem like it did. And um, so I would, if I, if you wanted to try it again, like taper your carbohydrates down so you're close to zero as possible. Yeah. Um, and then. I think more than protein, you're eating a lot of red meat. You would continue to eat a lot of red meat. Your poop, by the way, and your gut does does calm down after a while. And your poop yeah. is normal after a while. Because yeah. <laughs> I know that that like people sometimes have issues. When I came to it, it did the reverse for me because I already was having those issues, like oh. bathroom issues. So it kind of like sorted it out for me. But. <laughs> I think if somebody gives it like 30, 60 or 90 days, mm -hmm. you're going to experience like a lot of amazing benefits. You could, or, you know, you got to see for yourself, like what you seem to be doing is working, but if you want to feel even better, it's really good to get a detoxification of carbohydrates, like refined, pro like refined foods, or you don't even know like what vegetables are doing or not doing in your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. I try to get everything organic too, because I know there's a lot of fungicides, mm. pesticides. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's the problem. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's more the issue than actual vegetables. No. I'm not on the bandwagon that I'm not totally on the bandwagon. The vegetables are trying to kill you, but there's no. so much garbage in the vegetables now and at least ruminant animals have beautiful stomachs that can somehow detoxify that stuff for us. <laughs> yeah. The the way I get a lot of my fibers is actually from organic fruits. I love, oh, okay. um, so I try 
on the fruit, I try to go like the keto way on that. So usually in keto, you're eating a lot of black, like berries. So like yeah. berries, strawberries, blueberries, because the mm. sugars are lower. Sure. So I do eat a lot of berries. I mean, I like bananas. I like. Sure. Bananas. That's super sugary. <laughs> it is. 100%. Yeah. But if you're burning like oof, a thousand something calories a workout. Sure. Single banana. It's like, oh, that feels great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. I can understand that. And I think like everybody has a different body or has a, their body's at a different state. You're 24. I'm 40. <laughs> like there's a big difference there. You also are a man. I am a woman, different metabolic things, different cycles that occur, uh, like hormonal cycles that occur in the body. No, so. not, you know? <laughs> um, have you, have any of your friends been like, what are you doing? And yeah. Oh, I've had tons of people ask me what I'm doing and I'm yeah. like, track your calories. I mean, technically, if you track your calories and you're eating in a deficit, because that's what I do, um, okay. you know, you're going to lose weight. There's no way sure. you can't lose weight. Like sure. you could eat shitty and still lose weight. I'm not saying to do that. <laughs> it's know? probably, it's not good for your body, <laughs> but no. yeah. New, yeah. Like you still, you got to eat those natural meats and stuff because you got to get vitamins from them. You're, yeah, you need to have time to recover, right? Um, but yeah, like there's some days I'm like, shit, I want to make brittle, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I, okay. I want something fatty, I'll have it, but I still count it into my deficit. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, okay, I got to counter that. And it's very rare now, like, I'm kind of used to eating clean. It, okay, it's, it's like, okay, great, I don't have to cheat, you know, but some days I'm like, eh, it feels good, but okay. You know. sure, sure i'm at that level you know it's if i was like doing an intense cut right now yeah i wouldn't even think about it um sure and i'm about i mean i'm about 238 so i'm trying to see what i look like let's say at 220 yeah um, how tall I, are you i'm 5'9 oh um, okay but i have a bigger frame i'm a bigger guy so yeah. i i carry a lot of muscle already so I'm, I'm, I do need to do a BMI to see where I'm at because cool. or you can do one of those cool DEXA scans and it scans like where the fat is and where the muscle is and, and yeah. stuff like that. No, I'm doing things that I've never done before. Like for example, in each workout, I can do a hundred pushups, a hundred sit-ups, 30 pull-ups, like nothing, you know, that's like, that's a very normal thing for me. And then I'm still lifting weights. I'm still doing all these other crazy exercises and it's like, I have that energy. It's really weird. Yeah. And, that's at, and keep in mind, that's at five in the morning because <laughs> I, I work awesome. out from uh, five to around seven, seven thirty is typically what I do. Okay. Except Sundays, I, I do go longer. I'll, I'll go from 10 a.m. all the way to two. And that's mainly because I'm hanging with friends. I'm not rushing like heavy lifts. I'm, sure. I'm deadlifting heavy. I have to rest more. You know, there's a lot of yeah. things. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, okay. 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 So you're a hunter. Yes. Do you, do you waste any part of the animal? Or are you, are you all in? <laughs> well, that's you a good question. Um, <laughs> well, you know, we don't eat all the intestines, um, for example. Um, oh, okay. Like I do eat some, I have eat, eaten some of the organ meats. So like, let's say the heart, the liver, yeah. I've done it, but it's, um, it's different. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not an Indian, you know, but for example, like, you know, people go to hunt in Africa, for example, right? I've, yeah. hunt, I've personally hunted in Africa um, wow. when I was younger and, um, you know, out there, they actually use everything. Um, and keep in mind when you go hunt, you can't bring any of this meat back in the United States. It actually okay. also stays in the continent. There's mm -hmm. certain laws on that. So mm -hmm. One thing that they do, by they, I mean like the ranches and stuff, they actually donate the meat to local tribes and okay. the tribes will use everything. I mean, if you're going to mount the animal, if you're going to make a stuff, some taxidermy, you know, you keep that, but like yeah. it all goes to a good cause. So okay, I guess different cultures use it differently. You know, I've sure. seen people use everything here, but yeah, I just, I'm not going to eat a stomach, you know, like... <laughs> Like, okay. Yeah. I was just curious. I was actually more curious about the liver. Like if you, if you eat some of the organ meats, but I was also curious about all of the, the insides. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I have eaten the liver and heart. Um, yeah. You know, it's if cooked right, it tastes great. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm not big actually on cow liver, even though I did just do a video where I tried raw cow liver. I'm not I big. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, what's funny is that my sister, she then sent me something on how to like, you freeze it for two weeks and then you like cut off pea sizes and you swallow it like a vitamin. And apparently oh. the freezing for two weeks kills any pathogens. So no, I, no, I try to get, when you're on a, when you're on a carnivore diet, you want to sometimes eat organ meats and I love chicken liver. I'm like yeah. obsessed with chicken liver. So that I get down. Um, and I did try chicken stomachs. I can't say moyas, moyas. I don't know. I should be able to say it. It's a Spanish word, the stomach of a chicken. <laughs> I mean, they're like gizzards, right? Yeah, gizzards. It's a different word in Spanish, gizzards. So there's stuff like that that I like. But I was curious, like, oh, I have had fried intestines. Those are good, fried intestines. <laughs> well, here, a big thing we have, like, for example, on Sundays, we have two dishes. We have barbacoa and menudo. Um, oh, okay. Barbacoa is either the cheek meat of the cow or the tongue. Okay. So it depends. Like lengua is yeah. um, tongue, and then yeah. there's the cheeks, which are called resa, I believe. And then um, we also eat menudo. Menudo is like a tripe soup of the cow, but it's yeah. really and it has hummus and stuff. It's really good. So, like that stuff, I do like. I mean, we okay. also we eat tripe. I mean, we call it. Sure. Three and then uh, we have another thing called mollejas. Mollejas is, is the word. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, mollejas down here is the thymus gland of um, the cows. So it's oh. in the gland in the neck. They cut out and oh. they fry it, and it's really good. I, I love it. Um, I gotta try that. I gotta so mollejas because that's the chick, that's the gizzards. That's the word they use for gizzards, also like chicken part. <laughs> mollejas. <laughs> I didn't oh. realize they use it for chicken as well. Yeah, oh. but but it refers to the stomach. It refers to the gizzard. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'm curious if you wanted to, what would you want to say to somebody who is like maybe how you were uh, overweight and wanting to change something? What would your advice be for them? Oh, the first thing is mindset. Um, I mean, if you have the determination to actually make a change, obviously you need to preach what you pray. Um, yeah. you to, it's going to require work and it's going to require discipline. Um, yeah. But anyone can lose weight. It's just a sure. matter of like, how far are you willing to go? How far are you, how much consistency are you going to have in order to right. do that? And I decided, you know, like I needed to go all in. So yeah, I no was stopping that. And I'm still all in. I, I love what I do. You That's know. awesome. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and like, what else about the mindset? Like, what does a person need to tell themselves? Like, what things do they need to start thinking? And what or what ideas do they need to change? <laughs> they, the thing you're going to have to realize is this isn't only like a temporary change. You're going to have to make this a lifestyle for you to get comfortable in and actually like make it work. Um, and it, that's going to be every, that's going to be very different for everyone. If you want to be 300 pounds and that's your comfortable weight, good for you, man. Like, that's great. I didn't feel good that way. So I was like, sure. through that, we got to change something. Um, <laughs> but you know, it comes down to like, what are your goals and intentions? Like, do you want, like, for example, for me, one reason that I wanted to lose weight is, you know, when I'm in a relationship or any relationship with people. I want to be presentable and, you know, I'm an executive as well. So right. one, actually, this is an interesting story. So I used to work for a company that sold healthcare franchises and okay. imagine trying to sell a healthcare franchise when you're 300 pounds. It, just, <laughs> it, it doesn't work, you know, it like doesn't work. people see what you look like and they're like, oh, wow. Do I really think this works? You know, like, mm -hmm. and I didn't do well in that field because sure. I was overweight. Sure. So, you know, it's also a viewpoint thing. Like it shows discipline. If you're able to keep a physique and you have muscle, you're eating well and people respect that. And right. when they, and when they see that you're, there's nothing that can stop you because you're like, 
you have that ability to go and pervade on any facet of life. You can sure. grow anywhere from just, it starts with you. And then mm -hmm. if you want to grow your family, any groups, mankind, you know, it goes on. Yeah, exactly. Love that. That's it. That's a great story. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for taking your time, talking to me, telling me what you're doing. I'm sure it's going to help somebody. Look, I think everyone could benefit from like a whirl like carnivore, you know, yeah. do it like very, like really get into it and do it very well for a little while. But also I don't think everybody, I, and maybe I'm going to get hate for saying this. I don't think everyone needs to do it forever, but like sure. I call it, I heard somebody else say this. So now I'm saying it, the unholy Trinity, we need to stay away from that. Like the seed oils, the, the sugar and the refined carbohydrates, like that's the real enemy. And if you can eat, a hundred carbohydrates of healthy food a day and you're losing weight and you feel good and you're eating red meat, that's important. You're eating eggs. Yeah. Great. You know, do what works for you and your body. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, the weight will shed if you're actually hitting it from different angles and making it work. Yeah. Like again, my main things I do, you know, it's just being in that calorie deficit, um, eating that protein and making sure it's about my body weight in grams of course, like trying to stay as natural as possible. That's a big thing. Like your sure. refined oils, sugars, you're trying to stay away from that. You don't want that there. Um, yeah. I go for 10,000 steps a day. That's nice. It. That's my goal. Some, some days I do seven, some I do 10, you know, it's, but main goal is 10. Okay. And then, you know, exercise. If you're yeah. not, if you're not moving, like your metabolism stays low. Right. Like, and um, that was the big difference, you know, moving deficit. Oh, yeah. You burn. <laughs> That's great. Good. Uh, did you so you mentioned at the beginning you had the acid reflux. You thought you were going to die. You had like sort of sleep apnea. Um, yeah. So those totally went away. Those are totally oh, gone, right? Oh, yeah. Like I can sleep anywhere, anytime and pass out like in, like a potato. Like, I'll be oh, man. I, I just knock out um, acid reflux. I mean, yeah, it's not there at all. I mean, even if I eat, like, let's say I eat a little bit bad, you know, yeah. I don't, I get it very mildly, but it's not like to the point where I have acid coming up. Yeah. You know? Okay. And yeah, I mean, also like another thing that happened is like, you know, my skin, you know, it definitely with all the sweating and stuff, yeah, you know, that helps to get out a lot of toxins in you. Yeah, it just feels clear. You know that there's so many benefits when you lose this much weight because one one thing I I forgot to mention about the gym I go to there's no AC sure. in here. Um, this is this <laughs> isn't horrible. like a gold gym. Yeah, or, uh, no, no, we go full out here at Gentry Gym. So it, <laughs> think of um, a warehouse, but yeah, there is fans. It's insulated. Yeah. But, um, you know, you open the garage doors and you got that hundred degree Texas heat or, yeah. you got, or in, at 5 a.m. It's about 85, but it's human. Yeah. Woo, you, you sweat. Sure. Sure. Oh, my goodness. Well, so, that's awesome. That's a big thing. Like mm -hmm. one one stable datum with working out. If you're not if you're not sweating, like, are you really working? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And here. Oh, boy you're sweating buckets. Like I have to bring new clothes in to change because if I sit in my truck after I work out, it's just the water's everywhere. It's sure. Like oh, it. how much water do you drink a day? Cause you're doing a lot of exercise and you live in Texas and it's 600 degrees. So I have one of those big 128 ounce Yetis, the really big ones. Okay. So typically what I do is I'll drink like three quarters of that by like, oof probably by the end of my workout because okay. I, drink, I drink so much and yeah. I'm also taking my amino acids. I'm taking uh, other supplements. Like for example, I do take pre-workout in the morning because I'm waking up really early. Mm -hmm. I, I need that shock in order to go and I don't know, sled press 300 pounds or, you know, it's not like I wake up at four and I'm happy about that part. You know? <laughs> oh, you really do need to try the carnivore diet because you will be happy if you wake up at four. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, some days I'm like, oh no. I can't oh wait. no. I mean, you you wake up, you're like, oh, I got four hours of work, to, four hours of hardcore exercise or whatever, many hours of exercise in front of you. Yeah, and I'm like, well, it's going to be miserable, but I'm going to get some records today. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> That's but no, great. I do drink a lot of water. I do drink a lot of liquids, you know. Okay. It's, uh, I try to keep that in because with this heat, especially, Mm -hmm. I have noticed like, you know, there's some days I'm just dehydrated and I'm like, did I drink enough water? And then I was like, I still drank a lot, but maybe I didn't drink enough. So sure. Yeah. yeah. I understand. Are you last question? Are you a coffee drinker? Sometimes. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. My big vice on caffeine is energy drinks. Unfortunately, um, that oh, okay. is okay. It's not the best thing to do. I drink a lot of um, Rise energy drinks. Okay. Um, but, you know, the main reason I have been doing that is because, like, let's say I had a three-hour workout. And one thing I do need to work on is my sleep schedule because, you know, on average, I sleep during the week. I go to bed around, let's say, 1030, and I wake up at 420. So it's not a lot of sleep. Right. But also, that's just the schedule I have. I've tried to change it, mm -hmm. but you know, I have several things that happen. So I don't, that's how I can sleep. Um, so what I do to help with that, just to recover body wise is I started doing this. I actually rest more often. So for example, Wednesday, I don't go to the gym. I sleep in Yeah. and then Saturday's always been my rest day. So I'll usually have that split where I have three days of hardcore exercise I get a rest day and then I have two days rest day and just, it's a cycle. Right. Yeah. But you know, that, that type of caffeine is not the healthy type, but you know, <laughs> if you're, um, that's what I'm doing right now, but I don't, yeah. recommend it. Okay. I don't recommend doing that. Cause does it have sugar in it? The rye stuff? Mm, I don't, it's actually zero calories. So it's worse. I mean, it's aspartame. Oh. Oh well, yeah. That's probably worse. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's worse. Um, but it's zero calorie, but I don't yeah. recommend it constantly, but it's what I do. Um, okay. I ain't a perfect person. So <laughs> <laughs> none of us are, none of us are. It's yeah. hard to be perfect. <laughs> true. That's true. There's, there's some compromises here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, that's all I have. That's all I have. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much, 